Good afternoon. Welcome to the Midday Mall for Monday, the 21st of September. We're continuing to look through the book of Ezekiel, and we'd seen how he had this vision of God, and then in a vision he was taken to Jerusalem. In Jerusalem, we read that he saw um, how far the people had drifted from God and the extent to which idolatry had taken over and the idols were put in the temple and people were worshipping the sun and worshipping various other gods and goddesses. And then God finally says, that's it. Um, chapter 10 and verse 4, Then the glory of the Lord rose from above the cherubim and moved to the threshold of the temple. The cloud filled the temple and the court was full of the radiance of the glory of the Lord. And so we have God, the throne of God, on the move. And it moves from the center of the temple to the threshold. And then at the end of chapter 10, uh, we read, Then the glory of the Lord departed from over the threshold of the temple and stopped above the cherubim. While I watched, the cherubim spread their wings and rose from the ground. And as they went, the wheels went with them. They stopped at the entrance of the east gate of the Lord's house. And the glory of the God of Israel was above them. And then in chapter 11, at the end of the chapter, Then the cherubim with the wheels beside them spread their wings, and the glory of the God of Israel was above them. The glory of the Lord went up from within the city and stopped above the mountain east of it. And so we have this vision of God moving out from the center of the temple to the threshold, from the threshold to the gate, from the gate right out of the city. And in dealing with boys at school, I used to tell them, God's a perfect gentleman. He doesn't barge in where he's not invited. He offers an invitation to everybody and says, welcome me and I will come. Ask me and I will come to you, but I'm not going to barge in. And likewise, he doesn't overstay his welcome. If we turn away and say, well, I've had enough of you, he will leave. And that's what we see happening to Ezekiel I believe we see the same thing happening in society where we've turned away from God and he says, well, I'll leave. And as God leaves, we need to recognize that, that this is the God of love, this is the God of peace, this is the God of joy, this is the God of kindness. And when he departs, we mustn't expect to have those things still an integral part of our culture and society because they come from him. So it's a warning to, to us as a, as a culture, as a society. We need to take, um, hang on to God. But as a church, we need to do that as well, make sure that God is always the center. And we need to make sure as individuals that we keep God in the center of our lives. We, we keep looking to him and to him only for guidance. And when he speaks, we listen to him and we respond and do what he says. He never abandons us. And so if we want him in our lives, he will be there to look after us and hold us and, and comfort and guide and protect and bless us. He will be there. Um, but if we don't, he's happy to leave. Well, maybe not happy, but he, he will leave. So we need to make sure as individuals that we keep God in the center of our lives and let him guide us and show us the way. So hang on to God because he will always hang on to you. But he will never override you and do what you um, don't want. He always works with us. So work with him and know his presence in your life. Be blessed.